Last time in my perfect world, I did a whole lot of terraforming, built working railway crossings, and jammed a bunch more machines into the processing factory. But today, we're going to do some problem solving, and that problem is travel. So when I created this world, I made it a large biomes world, and I absolutely love it. But it does come with the issue of having all my towns very far apart, and you may notice my map looks a bit different, but that's because I've actually moved the world onto a server now, which has freed up some processing power on my PC and means I can actually record in higher quality again. That's nice. But I digress. So yeah, large biomes biomes means all my towns are very far apart. We've actually got one here, one here, one here, and one there, which is great when you just want to go on a rail journey. But when you're trying to build something and you've realised you've forgotten one thing and have to head 6,000 blocks there and 6,000 blocks back again, it can take 5 to 10 minutes, and when I'm recording, well, it just eats up a lot of time going backwards and forwards. But there are solutions to this problem. I mean, I could make a rail network that just goes through the nether and sort of block off the entrances with one-way signals to make sure the other trains don't use it. And that will, of course, be quicker, but in the long term, that's still going to be quite time-consuming. So instead, I've given in. I've added a new mod, and we now have access to waystones, which essentially allow you to teleport between locations where you've actually placed them. But they do come at a cost, because I now need to get warp stones. And to get those, we need ender pearls. The emeralds and the amethyst shards aren't really a problem, but the ender pearls, they certainly are. That's something we don't have easy access to, and I've only got three or four in storage that we've kind of collected along the way. And that means it's time to go to the end. We can't just go gallivanting off into the end unprepared, though. But don't panic. I have a plan. Step one, gear up. So when it comes to gearing up, I still don't have netherite armor. And to be honest, I'd quite like some. It reduces knockback, and I know shulkers exist. So yeah, that seems like a good idea. The problem is our nether mining drill is awful. It's, it's really bad. So instead, we're just going to take a whole bunch of TNT. And can I make any more? I can make some, although I should probably make some rockets as well. Yeah, we'll just turn that excess gunpowder into rockets. We might need them. And my bow does not have flame on it, so let's see if we can sort that out. It's going to be a lot safer to light the TNT from a distance. Question is, do I have a flame book? I do. Look at that. That's good. That saves me making loads of bows. And before we go any further, I should probably stock up on food. I'm looking pretty low, and I think my supplies are all out as well. Oh no, tell a lie. We've got some bacon and eggs. Lovely jubbly. We've got a bit of ratatouille in this as well. We have some cabbage rolls. And more cabbage rolls. Ah, that'll do for now. So let's head to the nether and try and get some more netherite. We need about 12 pieces of ancient debris, I think. Although a bonus four would be nice, so we can upgrade our backpack to netherite too. So let's just pick a spot, dig a big long tunnel, and blow some stuff up. Hopefully we'll get lucky. Although, wait a minute, before we go too far, we should probably do this on a chunk border. I think that increases our chances, right? Ah, look at that. We were on one anyway. What are the chances? Hopefully we'll get lots of debris. Not a single piece. That was disappointing. Looks like we might have been a bit low. Let's go up a little bit higher and try again, shall we? Well, there's one piece straight away. Good stuff. And I spy some more over there as well. Well, I'm already out of TNT. And we've only managed to get five bits, so that's not really ideal. We needed 16. But I wonder, how can we get gunpowder? So we can actually wash some crushed raw zinc to potentially get gunpowder. We can put potion of harming on cinder flower. Yep, can't do that yet. And just the normal methods. Okay, so maybe we can get some more. Depends how much zinc we've got, I guess. Oh, look at that. We've got loads we can crush. We actually did quite well out of that. In the end, we've got seven and a half stacks of gunpowder. Although that's only going to be, what, a stack and a half of TNT? But maybe if we use it at the right level, we'll get lucky and actually get what we need this time. Oh, jeez, the mosquitoes. Well, I've managed to get another five. That gives us 11 in total, I think, because we already had one in storage. And we also had one netherite scrap. So I guess we've got enough to do our armor, just not our backpack. But we're once again out of TNT, so let's just head back. It looks like our sword's not going to be netherite either, actually, but oh well. Yep, we've got 11 and a scrap in total. These blood sacks, do they have any use? What does a blood sprayer do? And you can turn that into a hemolymph, hem hem hemolymph blaster? What in the world? That all sounds thoroughly exciting, but we'll save that for another day. For now, let's go cook this stuff and finally upgrade our armor. Been a long time coming. So let's get all of these done. That's going to make me feel much safer. But something else I want to do is to put another upgrade on this backpack. I want to replace this one temporarily. Now, where is it? It's one of these somewhere. There we go, this one. Can't despawn or fall into a void. Oh, jeez. Okay, yeah, maybe we're not going to get that upgrade. We'll save that for another day. 
So in step one complete, it's time for step two, and that is to get some Eyes of Ender, because we're going to need those to find a stronghold. We actually have nine, which is a few more than I thought, so we haven't got to get too many more, but it does mean we need to return to the nether, go to a warped biome, and, well, just murder loads of Endermen. And I think we'll just go with the method of using boats to trap them and then killing them while they can't attack us. And the warped forest, I can see it on my mini-map, is just this way. Right, let's find some leggy bendy men. Ooh, it's all a bit quiet, if I'm honest. Where are they at? Can't find a single one. Ah, what is that? Nope. Nope, not interested. I wonder, is there another way to get ender pearls? Explore the outer end. Kill Enderman. Stronghold corridors. Yep. Mob drops. Yep. And villager trades. Ooh, cleric villager trade. Yeah, maybe that's a better way for me to do this because I'm having no luck with the spawns here. I think this area is just a little bit too small. There's too much other stuff spawning in and we're not getting any leggy bendy men. <laughs> I've picked myself up a couple of brewing stands, thousands of sticks and some logs. And what we're going to do is trade with these Fletchers so we can get loads of emeralds. And then we're going to make ourselves a cleric or two. Let's just stick those down. Hopefully somebody will come over eventually. And that should be the top level. There we go. Diamonds. And are you kidding me? You don't have ender pearls. I hate you. I don't know how to say your name. But I hate you. Right, let's do this one then. Hey, Virginia, now's your time to shine. Show me that ender pearl trade. Dang it! I'll set you free if you promise to take this as your profession. Thank you, Maribeth. Right, let's see what you've got to offer. Ah, oh, finally, one that has ender pearls. But I've run out of emeralds. But thank you, Maribeth, for actually providing me what I need. I just need to wait for these Fletchers to reset now so I can get more emeralds. Right, it's time. We're going to buy what we can. And that's it. We have 18 ender pearls. But that will be more than enough to find a stronghold. And yeah, I hate dealing with villagers. That's why we're going to the end to just kill the Enderman in the first place. That way we can have lots and lots of ender pearls without having to stand around doing villager trading. And we can make all the waystones we could possibly want. But if we just quickly pop to our mob farm here, we can grab a few of these. Make some of this and make a whole load of eyes of ender now it's time for step three gearing up more and what i mean by that is we're gonna make some fun toys to play with when we go to the end and the first fun thing we're going to make is this the potato cannon which launches our homegrown vegetables at enemies i mean what could be more fun than that and we'll also be making a back tank by the looks of it because we can power it with air pressure from that although then it means i won't be able to use a jetpack most likely and it says it shoots a suitable item from my inventory, which of course is going to be potatoes, but it does say homegrown vegetables. So we'll have to see what we've got laying around in the kitchen that we can shoot out of a gun, I guess. Question is, how do we make it? So, okay, that is exceptionally easy. So we need pipes, precision mechanism, andesite alloy, and copper. And actually, before we head over, we might as well see what we need for this. Just a bit more copper and another shaft. So for the potato cannon, we do this. I think that's correct. We'll find out in a second. Oh, yes. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, that looks so cool. Well, I love that. So let's just make the back tank, which was like that with copper there, I think. Yes, there we go. A wearable tank for carrying pressurized air. Brilliant. How do we fill it? Uh, collect pressurized air at a rate depending on the rotational speed. Oh, okay, so do we just sort of directly connect it? So let's just uh, steal that and stick it here for now. Yeah, there you go. That looks to be filling up. Oh, yeah, we can see it at the top. Oh, okay, so is that like how much time it lasts? Well, 15 minutes of air when it's full. No idea how that relates to potatoes fired, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. So while that charges, let's go grab ourselves some ammo. Question is, what do we have? Oh, we, well, we've got loads of potatoes. Maybe we should try some carrots and some onions and some tomatoes. We've got lots of those. We don't have quite so much of the other things, though. So maybe let's just give these four a try. Although, can we shoot pumpkins and melons as well? I mean, this must be tested. And there's also a bunch of enchantments we can potentially put on it as well. So we've got power, punch, flame, mending, unbreaking, looting, curse of vanishing... Um, ooh, potato recovery. That sounds fun. I guess the test is going to be, do we need to put enchants on books and then on the cannon, or can we chuck it directly in the enchanting table? Looks like we can put it directly in the table. Let's see what we get. Unbreaking three, potato recovery three, and power four. Oh, that's amazing. Let's just see if we've got any other potato-related books. No, it would appear not. Let's just enchant a bunch of books and see what else we can get. I think knockback works on it. And it gives us a good excuse to use our XP shower as well. Well, I've made loads of books, and I think we've got a couple here that might be useful. Capacity sounds like something that could go on the back tank. Unbreaking three would be good for the back tank as well, probably. And we've got punch one as well, which I suppose we could probably put on the cannon. So let's go grab that back tank. Ah, uh, there we go. That is now full. Let's just put that funnel back. 
Then let's grab a few more levels. And what can we put on the back tank? So protection. Okay, that's good. So basically all the chest plate ones and capacity. Well, we got protection four and thorns two from the initial enchant. That'll do. So it doesn't need mending. I assume that's because you fill it up and that's kind of its durability. But we can give it capacity three, which means it holds twice as much. Oh, amazing. So with those leveled up, let's just get rid of the rest of these books. We don't need these. But we can only have either the pressurized air or the jetpack on. So that's a bit concerning. But I guess the thing we need to know most. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So it looks like it just fires whatever veg is furthest left in the inventory. And they've all got different sounds. So I'm not sure what the difference between the veg is. Maybe they do different amounts of damage, but they certainly seem to have different rates of fire. And if we put this air tank on, it should stop the potato cannon from actually taking durability. And the onions definitely fire the slowest here. But it looks like we can collect our veg again as well. So this could be messy. So I guess we may as well fill up the rest of the back tank. But this is the first thing we're going to play with in the end. The potato cannon. But why stop there? We've also got this thing. A grappling whisk. Which apparently will save me from a free fall. Which sounds like a good thing when we're above the end. But it says it allows us to swing from tree to tree. So yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to work. But we don't know if we don't try. We've got to make some weird stuff for this. So we need some minecart couplings. We need a heat engine. And we need a whisk. So yeah, lots of iron sheets, lots of andesite alloy, and some zinc and copper nuggets. I think we can handle that. Wait a minute, you can fire the potato cannon from your offhand? Does that mean we can dual wield them? Okay, we'll make the whisk in a minute. I need to test this. Oh my god. Oh, and we can fire from both. Oh, this is amazing. I mean, the accuracy looks terrible, but it's definitely going to be fun. Now, where were we? Iron sheets, zinc nuggets, copper nuggets. We might need a few more of those. And we need to make some more andesite alloy. So to make this heat engine, it's andesite alloy. And three times we need to do big cog. No, nope, small cog, big cog, zinc nuggets, copper nuggets. So let's put these in the right order. Make our lives a little bit easier. Put one of them on there. And let's just rotate around these. And there we go. Is that our heat engine? Looks like it. And we need a whisk. We need six minecart couplings. What do they actually do? Chains together individual minecarts, causing them to move as a group. Oh, that's fun. We'll have to have a play around with that sometime. But I think we've now got everything we need for this. So it's something like this with the whisk at the bottom. I think that's right. So how does this work? Uh, right, okay. Well, it needs fuel to begin with. So there we go. It's just loading up now. Although, to be honest, we're getting pretty low. We should probably go fill this up. So how does this work? Do we just sort of fire it and then get pulled? Yep, yeah, okay. How do we use it well? That is the question. I feel like this is going to take a bit of practice to get used to, but it essentially sort of pulls you around and then holds you on till you let go again. I mean, it definitely speeds up some parts of travel. It's got quite the range on it as well. Look at that. But it does mean we should be able to save ourselves from the void. If we start falling down, we should just be able to do this and, you know, pull ourselves back up again. Definitely makes for some faster travel as well. Now that I'm getting used to it. I quite like this. But we need to go get more fuel, so I guess we're going down here. And for some reason, I lift it at the bottom. And one day I'll do something about this fuel situation so I don't need to keep doing this. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I never seem to get any mobs down here, even though I've not lit it up. I mean, look, there's a creeper there, but... I feel like this place should be rammed. So this is almost directly under my starter base. So that does tell me that I've probably just got loads of other mobs loaded in somewhere. Bit weird though, isn't it? Bearing in mind that when I go anywhere else that's dark, I get mobs all over the place. But there's just something about this area. Weird. Anyway, so we're full up on fuel. We've got our grappling hook and our potato cannons. Although the question is, can we actually enchant the whisk? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Wait a minute, we didn't try to fire a pumpkin or a melon. It does work. Shame I haven't got more of them. They probably do loads of damage. So this is all well and good, and I'm sure we're going to have lots of fun in the end. But what could be more fun than a flamethrower? So yes, we're going to make one of these next. And once again, should be fairly straightforward. I think we've got some sturdy sheets behind me, actually. Yeah, look at that. Wait a minute. Let's make two in case we can dual wield these as well. And we've got a couple of blaze burners. Excellent. We've got the andesite alloy. And then we just need a couple of heat engines. But that's easy enough. We'll just do that over here again. So, like that. And then one of those heat engine and then three sturdy sheets oh look at that thing but can we dual wield them i mean we can put it in our offhand so i don't see why not should probably get some fuel out as well oh i did that wrong right that's better so right click to shoot fire okay and don't panic i have fire tick off but it doesn't look like i can fire the one in my offhand 
That's a shame. I'm just going to wait for it to fill up so I can see how quickly it uses fuel. Kind of want to check the range on this thing as well. So it seems to use it fairly quickly, from what I can tell. And it's kind of got a turn on, turn off kind of thing going on. And range-wise, it seems to be hitting around about there. It's got a good spread of damage, though. I think we're going to have some fun with this. So we have all our fun stuff. I'm loaded up on veg. And that means it's time for step four. Locate a stronghold. So what direction are we going in? That way, apparently. Get out of it. Well, we almost fell directly into lava, but look at that. We're straight in the room. Let's just get rid of that. Well, that was fairly straightforward. We should probably have a look around the stronghold at some point, but to be honest, I don't really care about that right now. I just want loads of ender pearls. But to do that, we're going to need to kill the dragon first. Always so ominous, that sound. I love it. So let's just sort out our inventory. So we've got our bow for taking out the crystals. We've got our flamethrower for funsies. We've got a couple of potato cannons, which will hopefully do a little bit of damage. We've got a sword as backup. And of course, I have the grappling whisk in case I get smacked off the side. So as long as I load up on a whole bunch of veg, we should be good to go. And in fact, I'm going to keep some blocks handy as well, just so we can make ourselves an enderman safe zone. And that means it's time for step five. Stepping into the void. Ali up. Well, I've already looked at an enderman. That's not ideal. So, can my whisk get me over there? Oh, it can. Amazing. Right, so, we've got some crystals we need to destroy here. Can we use a potato cannon? Oh, we can. damage does it do to the dragon though yeah I don't I don't think I can actually damage the dragon with the potato cannon let's try the flamethrower you got me feeling like firebolt high in the sky looking like a funny storm Probably the most chill dragon fight I've ever had. Now let's just collect a whole bunch of ender poles before we go exploring. Oh, this is going to get loud. Yes, follow me. Follow me over here where I can kill you. What are they? Oh, they're dead. They're very dead. Ender flu? That doesn't sound like something I want. I've got a bunch of ender poles. We will get a few more, but I've just had a thought. While I'm here... Might as well grab some obsidian. So if I manually dig out a couple of layers, that should give us enough space to set up a drill with a rope and pulley. And then we should just be able to dig out one of these while we're killing some endermen down there. And we'll have all the obsidian we could need. Although I don't have any wood, chests, or barrels on me. So setting up a drill isn't really going to work. I might have to pop home quickly. But I think it'll be worth it for all that obsidian. There we go. We just need a bunch of chests. Probably not anywhere near that many. What is that? I just came over to grab a bucket of water. The size of that thing. Oh, it doesn't like being attacked. Oh, well, it's just like a normal squid, but bigger and more violent. 
Anyway, I've got my water to power the rope pulley, so I think we've got everything we need. I've just got to head all the way back to the end again. But luckily my van's over here, so we can just drive most of the way. So my thinking is I'll just put a whole bunch of drills down here on top of this pillar. Stick a couple of chests on the back, and we'll get it all glued together as well. And we'll stick a water wheel over here off to the side with some water. But the go faster thing, hopefully we'll be able to run that at full speed, but I don't know. I don't really know how it works. I don't think the drills actually take power. I think it's just the rope pulley, but we'll find out. So we'll use a couple of encased chain drives here, and then we'll stick this on. And it's overstressed. Okay, can't quite go that fast. Looks like it can comfortably do 64. How long is that going to take to break a block? That's what I want to know. Well, it's slow enough that I want to add some more water wheels. Well, I've removed that entire column. Let's see how much obsidian we've got. Well, there's a chest full in there and almost another chest in there. Awesome. That should tide us over for a while. I've also got 120 ender pearls, so that's good. I think we can clear this up and go adventuring in the end now. Let's see where we end up. I'm going to need myself a trapdoor. Let's make sure I've got my whisk handy as well, just in case. Well, we are fairly out in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? What are they? I don't know what that is. But it looks cool. All right, so not the best place to be starting. There's a weird thing up there as well. What's that? Oh, it flies. Well, I'm instantly terrified. So how are we going to do this? Do you reckon we can hop from place to place? This might work. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. But it's terrifying. This is an unreliable method of travel. I think I'm going to bridge out a bit more before I use the grappling hook again. Okay, but now we're here, we can zoom around. Hopefully we can find us. Oh, there's one right there. <laughs> Brilliant. And there's a boat. Amazing. We can use the grappling hook to get up here. Look at that. Easy peasy. Get rid of you. Oh, some lovely diamond armor. And an elytra. That's going to make traveling a little bit easier, probably. Because, well, we'll be able to fly over the void without dropping into it. Ooh, what's that? A mimic cube? Ah! What in the world? What's that stuff? Mimic cream? Yeah, not really sure what that was all about. Yoink. There's another one of those slime things that's not a slime. So it said it was called a mimic cube, and it looked like it pulled out a diamond sword. Is that because that's what I hit hit it with? I mean, does it literally just copy what I attack it with? I think it does, you know. They're quick. But they're not too bothersome. This thing, however, what is this? I want to know what you are. It's an endorphiage. Oh! Oh, it jumped on my face. It's like the mosquitoes, but in the end. Getting all sorts of advancements. Grab some chorus fruit while we're here. So, what was going on down here? Encounter an endor... Enderiorphage, a giant biochemical construct found in the end. Be careful not to catch ender flu. Oh, is that what this is? I think I have ender flu. Race against the clock. Catch the ender flu effect. Cure it by eating many chorus fruit or drinking milk. Be sure not to let it run its toll. I'm glad I stopped to read those, so I need to eat some chorus fruit to get rid of my ender flu. How much do I have to eat? It's still there. Five. I had to eat five. So in that case, we're going to make sure we've got lots and lots of chorus fruits. Hey, spire armor trim. We'll take that. Well, there's not much else going on here. The end is actually fairly boring. Who would have thought it? Although I do wonder, if I shoot these with a potato cannon, do they get potato cannons? Because that would be awesome. What? Oh! Oh, you hit, my, you hit my chorus fruit with a... What? Am I teleporting things away just by hitting them with a the chorus fruit? <gasps> Oh, this is fun. I can teleport anything. <laughs> oh, dear. So silly. I love it. Oh, we haven't killed one of these things yet. What is it? Don't really know. What's that? Oh, Jesus, one of them. Okay, right. Yeah, kill it. Kill it. We don't want the ender flu again. Oh, look, a waystone. I forgot they'd spawn naturally as well. Oh, there's the gateway over there on the right. We can get there. I think I've got the hang of the grappling hook now. Right, let's head home. Although we should probably take the dragon egg with us too. Where's it gone? There it is. But let's just do that. 
Yoink. And off we go. Successful trip. I had a wonderful time. And it was nice to see a new array of wildlife too. But more importantly, we've got loads of ender pearls, which means we can make more waystones. We do, of course, have the one that we found. And I'm curious what would happen if we put one on an airship. Like, I mean, it'd be fine while it's here, but when we move the contraption, would it move the waypoint as well? That's going to be an interesting experiment in the future. Ah, I don't want it displaying those. Okay, so if we set this to disabled, we don't have a waypoint. But we still have the way stone. Excellent. So now we need to take our other rubbish little train, which I think is also over here. Yep, there it is. We need to take this all the way back to our main base and, uh, well, set another way stone. Once we make them, of course. So to make way stones, we first need warp crystals, which means we need amethyst shards and emeralds. Ah, I've only got three emeralds. But I think it only takes one per waystone, so that should be fine for now. Yep, so that's what we need per warp stone. So let's just make as many as we can. Just the three. And then we need obsidian and stone bricks. Let's just make some of those. Get a bunch more waystones. And now we just need to install these where we want them. I think I want one right here in the middle of storage. Actually, I've got a better idea. I think it makes more sense to have these actually at the train stations. So I've still got to put in a little bit of effort. And I'll just stick it in front of the notice board here. So that's Beardew Valley. We'll make sure that one's disabled as well. Now, in theory, I can just go between the two of these. Oh, look at that. That's going to save me so much time. Now I just need to go put one at the logging camp. And we'll do the same thing just in front of the sign. Call that Timber Holm. And now we've got to drive all the way to Stone Valley Peaks and do it there as well. There we go. That's Stone Valley Peaks done. Now we should just be able to hop between all of our places nice and quickly. Look at this. Wonderful. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today, so I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.